Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about building a development environment where you can build your own ESP32 applications. Now we're going to take a different approach in this one. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi as our development environment. Now this may seem odd so bear with me for a second. So the Raspberry Pi, as you are familiar with, is a little $35 Linux computer with uh, four cores and each core being one gigahertz. So it's got effectively four gigahertz processing power. Well, that's useful. It's got a micro SD card and uh, it, it's a nice little Linux environment. Now, I have historically been a Windows development programmer and Windows has been my platform of choice but when I'm building ESP32 applications I like to build on a Linux platform. Now that may mean that I can install Linux on a spare uh, desktop or I can run virtualization software such as uh, VirtualBox or VMware and run Linux as a guest operating system on those platforms and those work great, those are fantastic. But in this go around, I wanted to use a spare Raspberry Pi, and in specifically, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Model uh, 3, uh, which is uh, got built in networking. And using the Raspberry Pi Model 3, I wanted to provide a build environment. Now, the reason I wanted to do that was not only is it a, a useful little Linux machine, but it also has various I.O. capabilities baked into the Raspberry Pi. Things like GPIO and I squared C and SPI and Serial and uh, a whole bunch of other goodies. Now since the ESP32 is also an IoT device, I can imagine myself wanting to drive the ESP32 in test cases, or I might want the ESP32 ESP32 to be able to drive something in test cases. And it struck me that a Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins and the ESP32's GPIO pins might be able to be coupled together, if nothing else than for testing purposes. So although I'm not there yet for doing those kind of activities, what I did want to do is see if I could build a build environment for the ESP32 on the Raspberry Pi and the answer is yes, and it's worked out really, really nicely. So with that uh, uh, background, let me show you how easy it is to achieve this task. So I've got here in front of me a Raspberry Pi Model 3 and uh, nothing special loaded on it at this point. So the first thing we want to do is download and install the binary tool chain which is necessary to compile ESP32 applications. Now the ESP32 processor is an extensa based processor which means it's not ARM and it's not Intel. So it's got its own compiler tools. Now the uh, there's various projects on GitHub where we can build the build tools, the build chain, and uh, my experience shows that on a meager little Raspberry Pi that takes about 10 hours and uh, fit needs about 10 gigabytes, yes, gigabytes of disk space in order to compile it. Well that's not going to fly, so what I did was I built it once and found that the resulting binaries were less than 100 megabytes. So what I've done is I've tarred those up and I've made those available for you. Now if you want, you can you can always compile the build chain from source, but I, I don't see any obvious reason to do that. So let's start at the beginning. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it ESP32. I'm going to change into that ESP32 directory and this is where I'm going to be doing my work. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm copying it from a notepad on another screen, but the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to download the Extensa toolchain. Here's the command and you'll find all these commands listed in the comments of the YouTube video. But we run this and now what happens is we are downloading the uh, binaries, my compiled binaries of the Extensa toolchain. That'll take a few seconds.
and now we've got the tool chain compiled we have a tar gz file now I want to extract this and uh, my recommended location for extraction is in the slash opt file system so here's the command I'm using to extract the contents of this newly downloaded uh, gzip file and it will extract it into the slash opt file system let that run and cook for a few minutes All right, that's done. Uh, we now no longer need the uh, gzip file that we downloaded. Of course, you can keep it, but there's no reason to. So uh, that's uh, that's finished. And if we look in the slash opt extensa esp32 elf folder, what we will find will be the uh, extracted files. We run ls, here's the files, and in the bin folder, these are the binaries. So these are the, these are the compiled, runnable, extensive files that have been downloaded uh, onto our file system and extracted. So uh, if we change back to our ESP32 folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this into my path slash opt slash extensa 32 l slash bin and add my path and now I've got commands like extensa ESP32 elf cc on my command line and that says it tried to run it but we didn't give it any input files but it's there on my path so we now have the extensa toolchain downloaded installed ready to run now that's one third of our battle the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clone from github a copy of the ESP uh, IDF which is the IOT development framework so here's what that command looks like and what it's doing is it's downloading from github the ESP IDF the IOT development framework and that is the environment which provides the the core framework for compiling uh, ESP32 applications it takes a few minutes to download uh, but once downloaded, um, as we see, it's downloading. Once downloaded, we've got to perform one more command. We go into the uh, downloaded uh, ESP IDF folder and we run a git submodule command which uh, sets everything up as we need. All right, so now we've done that. We can go back up to our ESP32 folder and we now find that we have an ESP IDF folder and we want to export an environment variable called IDF path equals uh, wherever we are ESP dash IDF. This is the environment variable that the build system uses to find where we've downloaded the ESP IDF folder. And now we're ready to start building some applications. So the way we build an application is we uh, clone the expressive sample template application. I'm going to call my application my app. We clone this and uh, it's not very big and once it's downloaded we now have a folder corresponding to whatever it was I named it we go into the my app folder there's a build system in here and the first thing we usually do is run make menu config now this is going to uh, compile now the menu configuration tool and the menu configuration tool is a full screen uh, terminal based application which allows us to set up our build environment now we can use the default build environment but uh, from here we can go in and select a variety of different components uh, for example in my serial flasher configuration I can specify where my default uh, uh, serial connection is I usually specify that I want to compress the upload and you can wander through here and see all the different entries when you want to make a change make the change save it uh, and then we can exit out of this tool and that will have created a new configuration file. Having created the configuration file, what remains for us now is to build the application.
So if I run make minus J5, and what J5 does is it says, uh, uh, take advantage of the four cores on our Raspberry Pi and run everything in parallel. So this is now going to compile the ESP IDF framework that takes a few minutes the, the first time we've ever compiled it and then it's going to compile our application which only takes a few seconds and the result of that will be a binary that we're then able to flash to the ESP32.